Hey, so um, I've been thinking about this video for a little while and I just kind of haven't fully realized what I wanted to, what I wanted to say, uh, but I was just actually driving home from training and was just like thinking, 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 and I was like, yeah, I want to shoot this video now. So the, the point of this video really is to kind of like, I don't know, um, offer encouragement to people who do not identify themselves as naturally aggressive. <laughs> so I am one of these people. Um, and there are a lot of people who, when they come to Muay Thai, and I've actually heard this come out of people's mouths. Uh, there was a, a student of, um, now he's Ajahn Phil Nurse uh, in New York, who, as he was working, was getting kind of frustrated. And he looked at uh, Crew Phil and was like, I'm not naturally aggressive. <laughs> And Krufil was like, well, you're not learning ballet in this, like, you're going to have to figure out how to be aggressive for Muay Thai. And um, there's something about the way this kid said, like, I'm not naturally aggressive. And then I've heard this kind of reiterated and uh, re-spoken, typed, whatever, by uh, lots of women, actually, who have contacted me who are struggling with their sparring or um, fighting or just kind of anything to do with their uh, self-expression in Muay Thai because they do not identify as naturally aggressive. And so this is kind of like a struggle. It was my friend Robin Clank. She owns a gym in Montana now, um, Gallatin Martial Arts. And she told me, you have to practice aggression. You have to train aggression. This is brilliant. Like this is totally one of those like truths with a capital T where like you absolutely have to train these things. The fact is there are people who are you know, we'll put air quotes around it, naturally aggressive. But if you know people who do even identify as being naturally aggressive, unless they're completely insufferable people, <laughs> they're actually selectively aggressive. So whether you're unnaturally aggressive and you're trying to become aggressive, you don't have to become naturally aggressive. You have to become selectively aggressive. Um, and that's how you train it. And that's, that's what you learn to do. And there are actually benefits to it as well that are not only in the gym. Um, there are different words that we use, right? So, like, a little boy is assertive and a little girl is bossy, right? So we're taught these kind of, like, negative connotations around certain uh, traits or uh, tendencies or actions or things like this. So I am neither naturally assertive nor naturally aggressive in this, like, huge quotations around nature kind of thing. I'm not... I'm not aggressive or assertive, um, but I can actually benefit from elements that are kind of similar to those that I am naturally these things. Maybe I should back up. If you're naturally something, right, it doesn't mean that that's your true nature and it's unchangeable or whatever this thing is. Anything that you find to be natural about yourself just means that it's easy for you to do. Like it's kind of your tendency. I'm naturally right-handed. That doesn't mean I can't use my left hand and that doesn't mean that without concerted effort, I can't actually strengthen my left hand to be as accurate in writing and things like this as my right hand. And the cool thing about this is that because my right side is my dominant side and I've like focused on making my left side uh, able to do the things my right side does, my right side doesn't atrophy. Like if you're a, a certain type of person and you start focusing on being more assertive or being more, uh, aggressive or things like this, you're not going to atrophy your kind of like kindness or, um, or any of the traits. You're not going to become like a monster, like a Jekyll and Hyde situation. Uh, you're just strengthening, strengthening things that you consider unnatural to yourself, which they're not actually unnatural. It just means that they require a little bit more effort on your part. And the more you do it and the more you focus on it, the less effort it requires. And now it's kind of natural. But again, it's selectively so rather than like I'm naturally this or I'm not, and I can't change it. Um, so I, for instance, being non-assertive <laughs> and non-confrontational and non-aggressive and all of these things, something that I do have, air quotes, in my nature is that I'm very stubborn. I'm unbelievably stubborn. So that quality is something that I brought into my training that works as a little, like, spacer, like a little stand-in for aggression until I could actually work on and practice my aggression uh, in a way that was beneficial for me. Um, and then as I've become more aggressive uh, in my training, it's actually balanced out really well in my real life um, in that I've become more assertive at, at certain times. Um, all of us 
are uh, able to be aggressive or assertive at certain times, even if that's not your like natural state, that's not your tendency, that's not the first thing you grab the object with, you're not right-handed. The first thing you address something with is like, well, I don't wanna confront this, that's your nature kind of thing. Okay, that's your dominant side. But you can grab something with your left hand, you just have to think about it for a second first. So I, for instance, in this like selective aggression that I'm talking about, um, I am very non-confrontational. I don't like go jump in on people who are saying something that I disagree with. I don't like to argue on the internet. <laughs> like I don't, I don't like any of these things, but things that I am very uh, selectively aggressive towards and things that I just feel very strongly about and kind of get uh, active on in a very natural way is if I see people punching down politically, pisses me off. I totally jump in on that. It really, really pisses me off. It, I just go for it. If I see someone abusing an animal, I would like stop my bike, get over there and stop what's happening there, that kind of thing. Um, these are kind of selective moments of aggression that I wouldn't do in other contexts. Like if someone was actually being really mean to me, I probably would not talk back at all. But someone screaming at someone like punching down, I totally get involved in that. Um, and it's that's just my nature as we're talking about this. Um, so if, if being aggressive is something that you feel is not your nature and you feel like it's something that you need for your sparring or for your um, practicing of Muay Thai and things like this, uh, choose a part of yourself that's adjacent to aggression, like my stubbornness or something like this, um, is, is a very good way to start. It allows you to work on something that you have felt and that you do understand and uh, kind of build that muscle up and then you can start building the um, aggression practice as well. But I think it's also important to define words um, in kind of more clear ways. Like I don't think I don't think aggression actually is a very clear word like saying you need to be aggressive and all these things like Say you're not naturally aggressive, you don't identify as being naturally aggressive, and you have a hard time being selectively aggressive in the context of Muay Thai. This is a problem many of us have, this is a problem that I've had. Um, in Thailand scoring, aggression is not favored. Aggression is not a great thing. So if you're being told or if you think by watching other things that your lack of aggression is a serious problem, in Thai Muay Thai, aggression is not actually a good thing. It can work against you in a very strong way. In Thai Muay Thai, what scores highly is dominance. Dominance and aggression can go together, but when they go together, what's scoring is the dominance. Dominance without aggression scores. Aggression without dominance actually scores against you. It looks really, really bad. Um, if you don't know what the difference between dominance and aggression is, or if it's kind of like you can't really picture it, or it's just not really clear, these are just like two words <laughs> floating around somewhat abstractly, um, Google Caesar Milan, he's the dog whisperer. Uh, if he has like an aggressive dog, you can picture an aggressive dog. Everyone has in their mind's eye, the aggressive barking, like gonna bite you dog. If you meet that dog with aggression, it's gonna bite you <laughs> and you're gonna have a dog fight. But what Caesar Milan does and why he's the dog whisperer is that he uh, addresses an aggressive dog with what he calls like calm or quiet dominance. So if you don't know what that looks like, Google Scenes of Milan dealing with an aggressive dog and how he deals with that is with his quiet or calm dominance. And you can see the difference between dominance and aggression. This is how fighters in Thailand win fights, look really good, are um, what we would consider like uh, really aggressive or whatever, something like this, which is kind of like messy and out of control of your own emotions and things like this, whereas dominant is um, controlling the other person, having the upper hand, letting them kind of make a fool of themselves or uh, you know, reveal their own weaknesses, this kind of thing. Um, so understanding the difference between dominance and aggression, if you feel like you're not naturally aggressive and it's difficult for you to be aggressive, work on your dominance because you can be dominant without being aggressive. So even if you never get to the like, now I'm selectively aggressive point, if that's something that's really uncomfortable for you, I actually have quite a bit of discomfort being aggressive, but I don't have discomfort being dominant. Um, if you can figure out, tease out the differences between those things and really focus on your dominant moments and those you can actually be laughing your ass off during, you don't have to be all like, I hate you, I hate my opponent, <laughs> like that's very aggressive. Uh, 
San Chai, for example, like laughing, um, him and Sing Dom when they're sparring are just totally like laughing and basically putting on a show that looks like a um, kind of, I don't know, uh, Three Stooges type situation. That's real dominance. There's real dominance in their play like that. Um, and it's not super aggressive. Aggressive is not necessary uh, in some of those situations. So all of that is to say, <laughs> for those of you out there who are struggling because you think there's something wrong with you that you're not naturally aggressive, awesome. You do not have to be naturally aggressive. You need to be at times selectively aggressive. And even if you don't like being selectively aggressive, you can still be very, very good at Muay Thai by being dominant. And this is a different thing. It's good to practice aggression because it is adjacent to the things that allow you to be dominant. Uh, if you're not aggressive, there are things that you can be adjacent to aggression, like if you have pride and you don't like people getting something on you, if you're stubborn like me and it's just too embarrassing to back down and so you have to go back in. Um, those kinds of things, you can kind of like worm your way, like kind of just take the corner towards aggression without just being like, I have to like go in and be aggressive right away. That's not necessarily something that's good for you. It's not good for you mentally. It's not really good aesthetically. Um, and it, if it doesn't feel good to you, then don't do it, honestly. Uh, if, you're, if you're trying to get the end result of what aggression gets for you, find those little adjacent things that are akin to that will work you towards that. And you can, uh, you can work on like standing in, you can work on your kind of like, fuck you, this is my spot, uh, whatever things like aggression there are that don't feel awful to you. And uh, you don't have to be, you don't have to be naturally aggressive. It's okay, <laughs> like, it's, it's actually cool. That's awesome. It's cool that you're not naturally aggressive and you've chosen something that people would assume aggression is absolutely necessary for. It, uh, it helps in a lot of ways in the same way that um, confidence, like natural confidence is like this unbelievable magic wand for people who are training because they're confident in something even if they're shitty at it but their confidence kind of like pulls them above it and then they're good at it it's that like fake it till you make it but for those people it's real that's awesome if you don't have confidence if you're not a confident person <laughs> you can still achieve things that those confident people do it's just you have a different map okay like it doesn't matter if your road to the post office takes 20 minutes and someone else's road to the post office takes five minutes. It just matters that you're both trying to get to the post office. It's like a different map. So if you're not naturally aggressive, be selectively aggressive, but ultimately just figure out how to be dominant. <laughs>